Rub up your engines! You can buy cars out of vending machines on the street now in London, England. A company called Auto Trader now has cars sitting inside these glass containers locked in that you can buy with your phone. You can get an app, put it in, and you can buy the car right on the spot. The car seller that's already agreed what price they want to go. It's just like all the other guys like CarMax. You can't haggle the price. And if you see that car and you want to buy it, you can use your phone if you have the money and the app on your phone. Buy the car right there on the street in London and then just drive it out. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Everybody knows that you buy coffee from a vending machine, it tastes like crap. Well, I'd be kind of leery about buying a car out of a vending machine for that kind of money. Woo! <laughs> Taking a chance without even road testing it. You can now buy a car in London out of a vending machine. Rockpile Rancher says, Scotty, love the show. Got a 93 Nissan Pathfinder, six cylinder, 190,000 miles. Runs good. Is it worth restoring? Thanks. If you like the vehicle, yes, that's a 93 Nissan Pathfinder. They were strong built vehicles. That was long before Renault took over, and they can last a really long time if parts are available. If you like that truck, go ahead and restore it. I've had customers with those things get over 300,000 miles on them with original engines and trannies, and they're still running okay. That Those were well made. You can still get parts for them. There's nothing wrong with a 93 Pathfinder. You could probably drive that thing forever if you restored it and took care of it, because the Nissan really knew how to make standard transmissions. The Datsuns, I mean, originally, they made some of the best little race cars out there with standard transmissions. I would definitely keep it up with a standard transmission and restore it. Santos Chicas, would you recommend a Honda Odyssey or Toyota Sienna for a family van? Toyota Sienna by far. Now when they first came out, Honda Odysseys were pretty good vans, but then they had automatic transmission problems, cam problems in the engines. They just loaded with problems. Why buy something that has problems when you get Toyota Sienna that are pretty bulletproof? And it doesn't really matter what year, if you can find one with low enough mileage that you want to buy at a good enough price, go ahead and buy it. Or, and if you don't care, buy a brand new one and drive it for 20, 30 years like my son's doing. Dave says, I have a Saturn R. Turn on the car, the fan just stays on. Very commonly on those, that is a bad fan temperature sensor. It's just a little sensor. Find where that is. Go to like AutoZone. They can show you where it is on a picture. Even print you out a picture, sell you one, and put it in. Because if that's bad, it'll do exactly that. Pray it's that. Because if it's not, then either the wiring's gone bad or the computer's gone bad. Often on those, I see the computers go bad. And I mean, if it runs okay otherwise, and when you shut the car off, the fan goes off, I'd live with it on that. Because the car's not worth that much money. The computer costs a fortune. And if it runs too much, who cares? So if the fan burns out easy, you can get an aftermarket fan for many discount auto parts store for less than a hundred bucks and just replace it and not even worry about it if it works okay otherwise. RG Reviews. How much does it cost to replace the radiator on a minivan? The dealer wants over a thousand dollars to do the job. We'll never go to the dealer. They always charge too much anyways. It depends on the minivan. I've had Toyota minivans. I could change the radiator in 45 minutes. It was no big deal. I can get aftermarket ones that work fine. Less than a hundred and twenty dollars sometimes. So you always have to decide where you're going to buy the parts see where they're coming from. And the aftermarket radiators are perfectly fine. I've been using them for decades and they still work fine. How hard of a job it is to do your particular minivan because some of the ones, like some of the Fords, you got to drop the whole front of the vehicle off and drop it down, get that up high in the air because the radiator drops down instead of up. It can be a real pain in the butt, but research yours how long it takes because like I say, some of them like Toyotas, I can change them out in 45 minutes. It's no big deal. Steph says that. Any ideas on rodency in the wiring? Yeah, you know, the weird thing is rodency wiring in cars because it gives them a thrill. I guess it's like them smoking a joint. The little bit of electricity going through doesn't hurt them, but it kind of gives them a thrill from what scientists have told me. You can do like I've got that video. You can buy those rodent ultrasonic devices. You got to get the ones that are two toned because they get used to ooh, but they don't get used to wee wee wee. And uh, people sell them. You can get 12 volt versions, hook them up. They actually do work. I have them actually in the walls of my house, an old house. The rats were always getting in there making noise. So I drilled holes, stuck the things, and then plugged them into the walls. They make 120 volt versions, and they went away, and they didn't come back. The stuff actually does work, but you got to get the one that's two tone. Used to one tone, but the other tone, the oscillation drives them nuts. Adina Jaw says, should I get an engine guard or differential guard when buying a car? Do they do any good? If they're low, yes, they do work. 
You get solid steel ones that either weld or bolt on, and they're garden stuff. Now, some vehicles, you don't need them. Like, you take a classic older Toyota Camry. The frame of the vehicle was actually well below the engine. So, you're going to hit the frame before you hit the engine, which is a good thing, because I got my son a 93 Camry for his first car. Man, he scraped all on the bottom of it, driving like a lunatic over bumps and stuff. But it never hurt the engine, because all the subframe there just got a bunch of scratches on it, but it was solid metal, never did any damage. Now, if you look at your car and you see the differential and the engine oil pan is lower than the frame of the car, definitely put a guard on it. It's a worthwhile thing to do if it's designed that way. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.